I'd like to talk about food. I have a great relationship with food. I love it very much. But I know a lot about food because of my career. Do you want us to tell you the facts about food or the high flying disc? <laughs> and that's where I want to be. That's as far as this conversation is really going to go today. <laughs> because that's the question that we want you to answer. Because there are so many facts about food right. that keep you from the high flying disc. And those facts present themselves over and over again in more facts and more facts and more facts. But it doesn't have to be that way. You could choose the high flying disc version and you could create different facts and you don't believe that you don't believe that so this conversation is going to be way harder than anybody wants it to be assuming i take myself out of the equation and the people that walk in and they hurt and i that's a fact and I certainly know that the best way for them to not hurt is to get in alignment and to get on the high filing yes. flying disc. Yes. But if I want to give them instant, quick, you can feel better tomorrow remedies, then do it by all means. Because that's the path of least resistance. Okay. And that's why their inner being brought them to you. We're never suggesting that you don't offer any soothing or remedy that you have at your fingertips, but sometimes you do yourself a disservice by getting too wrapped up in the majority of cases what's bothering them started a long time before this symptom and you're giving them the hundred thousand dollars so that they can take a better journey right now yeah. when what they really want to do is stop creating that situation so while you might give them the remedy that improves this they're probably going to get themselves there again and again yeah. and again yeah. and again yeah. unless you're proceeding from what you really know so I can teach them that all food is good, but there's some food that's better. It's sort of like someone showing up with a big wound okay. and you wouldn't say to them, you know, you create your own reality <laughs> as they're dripping all over everywhere. And you know, this is a consequence of the vibration that you've been offering. Yes. And I'd like to show you how to get into a better frame of mind. If you were on the high flying disc, you wouldn't be bleeding to death right now. In other words, of course. <laughs> stitch them up stitch them up but don't let their inability to control their yes. life yes. make you believe in things that don't need to be yes. believed in yes yes i don't want to teach fear i don't want them to be afraid of anything that they eat and i try to do that in a way of this is a temporary this is just where we are right now and but it does seem to me that there are some foods that have different vibrations than others and and, and i'm not talking about for weight loss or anything like that i'm talking about just the strength and the, the vibration of vegetables versus Cheetos. And I... Vegetables, high-flying disc. Cheetos, high-flying disc. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just messing with you. I... <laughs> but of course, we understand that you understand the energy giving value of food. Yes, but we'll hear you. Well, it, it, so this also, this is my question for, for years, but so somebody posted a photo of my daughter last night, lunch, and I look and I look in front of her and I see this brown thing and I was like, oh, please let it be a beer. And I go in closer and it's a Coke and I literally start shaking. I'm like, she's drinking a Coke. <laughs> And I'm embarrassed, like I'm so embarrassed that I react that way and I don't want to feel that way. And I know that if she's in alignment, she can drink a Coke and be totally fine. But I don't feel that because then she tells me the next day she has a headache and I'm like, it's because you had a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to kick her out. <laughs> so. There's something important to say about when you are in a vulnerable or angry vibration that you match up with things that are not well-being in nature and that when you are high flying, you match up with things that are well-being in nature. And we just want to present that premise and stop with that premise. This is the starting place that we want to talk about receptive mode, 
elation, appreciation, love, receptive mode, vulnerability, insecurity, anger. Now we're deliberately making extremes here. This is the receptive mode because receptive mode doesn't just mean being receptive to your inner being. It means what you've been broadcasting has put you in the receptive mode of something. If what you've been broadcasting has put you in the receptive mode of your inner being and infinite intelligence, then that combination of you and you is going to inspire you to different behavior. You're going to receive different inspiration about okay. different things. But if you're vulnerable or angry as much of the world is or insecure or focused on unwanted things, then that receptive mode is going to match you up with things that perpetuate more of that. And so that's why this isn't just a conversation about food. This is a conversation about everything. So any discussion that is about anything other than what receptive mode one was in before it happened is a conversation that's not going to bring much clarity. So we just want to say this, almost all discussions about politics and food and religion and parenting and all the social issues are from this receptive mode. The majority of the population is on this receptive mode and that's the dialogue and that's the experience that they're having. And the thing that is so confusing to them is they think they're just telling it like it is. They think they're just presenting the facts. They don't know they have created the facts that they are now presenting. So it's just this wallowing in all of this stuff that is not wanted and all this looking for remedies in a place that they cannot be found. Oh, stop gaps. Yeah, you can sew them up and keep them from dripping all over your counter. You can stop gap it, but you're not going to make any real headway until you get consistently in the receptive mode. Now we acknowledge the majority of people who are coming to you aren't ready to go there. They want you to give them something else. We just want you to understand what you're doing. And we don't want you to get all facted up in this causes this and this causes this and this causes this. Because there's so much more to the story before those facts occurred that you and everybody else is not taking into consideration. And until you do, you're not going to be able to explain it. There are all kinds of people that are absolute anomalies to the food that they are eating by today's standards. They have no business living that long. They have no business feeling that good. They have no business. They should have died a long time ago, given the diet that they've been living. There are other factors that are involved in the equation, you see. Yes. And so that's what you want to do. You just kind of want to soften it with them and do the best you can to soothe them. That's always what teachers do teachers and uplifters and healers you just soothe 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 but you are not soothing your daughter when you freak out when she's drinking a coke yes. you're not soothing her that's not a soothing thing it's not honoring her judgment it's not acknowledging that she gets to decide what she wants and there was a time not that long ago that a mother would have freaked out if she thought it was a beer <laughs> and been happy if she thought it was a coke <laughs> In other words, things are really changing, aren't they? I'm a strange parent. You help us say what no. we began with this morning in a really strong way. It is such a difficult thing to get around your own beliefs. And each person you meet and the facts that they present to you, the evidence that they present to you, just shores up a belief. And so we're wanting you to just ask often am I in the receptive mode am I in the receptive mode am I in the receptive mode of what source knows in other words there are so many people that are just looking around at what is they're looking at what is at the facts of what is and debating the facts of what is until they get a big enough consensus in order to say this is what is we just keep wanting to say to leading edge thinkers like you what is doesn't mean diddly squat don't keep recreating what is because you believe so much in what is you want to create something other than what is, don't you? Want to create something other than what is? Don't you think that in medicine that there have been plenty of inventors and genius interpreters and receivers who have looked at what is and then found a way to really improve it? And it wasn't by looking at what is. So? I love all of this. So when the complaint comes to me, I don't feel well. That's when I really get off my high flying desk because I feel this duty to help her feel better or any of my patients. And well, are you doing what I suggested? No. Okay. 
I understand it's it's her vibration where she wants to be, but then I don't want but to hear the, the negative. Thing. You see, the younger they are, the more natural rebellion they have to taking action to soothe something. Because they've still got that feeling of invincibility. They've still got that feeling of resourcefulness about them. They're wanting to say to you, there are other ways than this. It's one way, but okay. If you're giving advice to someone on a regular basis, yeah. And they're not benefiting by your advice because they're not hearing it then your problem isn't the advice your problem is you're not being heard and the reason you're not being heard is because you're not in the receptive mode because you're focused upon their problem being focused upon their problem is the thing that makes her more crazy than everything else all put together you see how it all ties together so you think we're talking about food we're not talking about food we're talking about receptive mode. We're talking about independence. We're talking about letting people live their own life. Esther said to someone the other day, because someone wanted her and her Abraham Hicks publications to offer a survey to clients. And Esther said, the problem with a survey is when you ask people what they think and they tell you, then they want you to do what they told you they wanted you to do. And if what they want you to do isn't a good idea for the whole, now you've just made a whole lot of people mad. Because you ask them what they think and now they tell you and then you don't do it. And we want you all to get in that place where you're not asking so many people what they think. Where you're just tuning in to who you really are and following the inspiration that comes from that, you see. And that's what you want to teach your daughter. You don't want to teach her that you've lived a lot of life and you've discovered all of these things about all of these things. And she needs to avoid that and that and that and that. She needs to do this and not do this and avoid that and do this. Because what her innate instinctual thing is, that's good for you, mom. But I got to figure this out on my own. And you're just pretty much irritating me. <laughs> It's true of every parent-child relationship. They've come to teach you their invincibility. And you are hell-bent on showing them the pitfalls that they must overcome. And the two just don't jive. And one is receptive mode and one isn't. And we are not in any way wanting to discredit the incredible understanding that you have about food and the way people are responding to it. That's not what this conversation is about. What you're doing is an important thing and you're bringing a lot of soothing to a lot of people. But there is another soothing. Your daughter is asking for another soothing altogether. And most of the people that you will be interacting in going forward will be asking for that getting into the receptive mode of soothing as well. And that's what I feel like I want to do now. So when the patient comes in and I teach them probably for their words about intuition and what feels right to eat and what it feels like asking them to kind of tune into their body before they make their food decisions is that possibly a helpful way to start teaching them about getting in the receptive it mode is, and you'll have to figure out it depends on where they are usually when people are in stress they don't want you to teach them how to think they want you to just give them something to make them feel better and that's been happening to you so much that that's the way you are now prone to go but it's not a hundred percent maybe ten percent of your patients are ready for this conversation where the majority of them only want this we are not so interested in your help to them because there's lots of help coming to them in lots of different ways we're interested in your understanding about this yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank yeah. you very much. Really good. Yeah. <laughs>